We just reported the breaking news that Donald Trump is now tweeting about another company in Indiana that is sending jobs to Mexico. Donald Trump's tweet says Rexnord of Indiana is moving to Mexico, viciously firing all of its 300 workers. This is happening all over the country. No more. Of course, nothing in that tweet about what Donald Trump can or will do to stop this. And all of this has Donald Trump in trouble with Sarah Palin, of all people. Sarah Palin has gone rogue. This time, she's not just pretending to go rogue. She's actually going rogue. She has turned on Donald Trump, the first Republican to do so since the election, when Republicans like Mitt Romney, who had turned against candidate Donald Trump, have been turning back to support the coming presidency of Donald Trump. Sarah Palin herself, only days ago, appeared to be lobbying for the cabinet position of Secretary of Veterans uh, in the Veterans Administration, and now she is attacking Donald Trump over what Donald Trump thinks is the greatest thing he's ever done, making a deal with Carrier to pay them $7 million from the taxpayers of Indiana in return for Carrier then moving 1,300 jobs to Mexico. Donald Trump says he got the governor of Indiana, Mike Pence, his future vice president, to make that payment to Carrier because Carrier said there were another 800 jobs that it was threatening to move to Mexico, that it would not move to Mexico if, if, Carrier was paid not to move those jobs. And so the Trump-Pence team came up with the extortion money to save those jobs. Here's what Sarah Palin says about that. When government steps in arbitrarily with individual subsidies, favoring one business over others, it sets inconsistent, unfair, illogical precedent. Meanwhile, the invisible hand that best orchestrates a free people's free enterprise system gets amputated. Then special interests creep in and manipulate markets. Republicans oppose this, remember? Instead, we support competition on a level playing field, remember? Because we know special interest crony capitalism is one big fail. Politicians picking and choosing recipients of corporate welfare is railed against by fiscal conservatives, for it's a hallmark of corruption and socialism. Here is Sarah Palin in January making the opposite case in favor of Donald Trump that no one has to worry about whether Donald Trump is conservative enough. Now what they're doing is wailing, well, Trump and his, uh, uh, his Trumpeters, well, they're not conservative enough. Oh, my goodness gracious. How are they to tell us that we're not conservative enough? in order to be able to make these changes in America that we know need to be made. Now they're concerned about this ideological purity? Give me a break. Joining us now. We're going to be talking about Carrier, the way Republicans, uh, uh, and uh, we were all talking about uh, Solyndra at, uh, early in the uh, Ob Obama administration. Uh, he has done exactly what uh, uh, Republicans have been against for uh, all this time, and that is attempting to pick uh, winners and losers. Very expensive picking in this case because, you know, we've mentioned the, the tax credits and what was done there. What's not been mentioned is the implied uh, a sense that uh, uh, Carrier's parent company is going to get billions of dollars in, uh, in Pentagon uh, contracts. Now, if you're going to start throwing, you know, a billion dollars here and there at companies to keep a few thousand jobs in the country, pretty soon that's going to add up to real money. Uh, let's listen to what the Wall Street Journal uh, has said about this in their editorial. Uh, they said, like the Nixon administration, Donald Trump's unpredictable, non-ideological policymaking will sometimes be disorienting for those who claim to believe in free markets. Some conservatives will be tempted to tolerate bad policies that appear to be popular that they'd never accept from President Obama. Many Republicans stayed silent or supported Nixon as he imposed wage and price controls and created the EPA, only to regret it later. They should shouldn't make the same mistake with Mr. Trump. And Maria Teresa, it is just astounding to me that the voices we're hearing from are the Wall Street Journal editorial board and Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin <laughs> is the one who's trying to teach Republican economics to Donald Trump.